So Deontay Wilder knocks out Luis Ortiz in the 10th round to retain his WBC World Heavyweight title. First of all, I have to say hats off to both men because this was a fantastic fight. It was a very cautious start from both guys. Uh, Both guys were far more cautious in the first few rounds of this fight than they've ever been before in their previous fights, particularly Ortiz. Ortiz normally storms in. Uh, well, not storms in, but he's normally a lot more aggressive than he was here in the early rounds against Wilder. So Ortiz was measured, Ortiz was pushing the pace, but very cautiously. And I think that was indicative of the fact that both guys were stepping up in this fight. You know, people talked about Wilder stepping up. Ortiz was stepping up too. This was a big step up in competition for him, not only Wilder. And as I say, that was reflected by how cautious both guys were. The breakthrough moment and, you know, through the first four and a half rounds, there was very little in it. You could probably give maybe the majority of the rounds to Ortiz because he was pushing the action and he was just landing one or two more shots more than Wilder. Nothing particularly clean. One or two, you know, decent left hands, but nothing especially solid. Um, But it was close through the first let's say four and a half rounds, but you could edge it to Ortiz. The breakthrough pivotal moment in the fight came in the fifth where Deontay Wilder managed to catch Luis Ortiz with a right hand and sent him to the canvas. Ortiz got up. He wasn't particularly hurt, but it was definitely a legitimate knockdown. And he was staggered again, I think in the sixth round, or it might've been early in the seventh. But later on in the seventh, Ortiz then landed Big shots on Wilder, put Wilder in serious trouble. And God knows how Wilder got through that seventh round. He showed a lot of heart and he actually showed a lot of savvy because on replay, he wasn't getting hit as clean and as often as it looked when you were watching it live. Wilder is such an awkward character. He looks ungainly and uncoordinated when he's attacking, but he also looks ungainly and uncoordinated when he's defending. And that makes it difficult to pin him down. So even though Ortiz was landing shots, he was also struggling to get through the octopus-like arms of Wilder at times in that seventh. And Ortiz, being an old guy, expended a lot of energy in that seventh round. And I think really Ortiz sold out. What I mean by that is he went for broke in that seventh. He thought he could get Wilder out. And when he couldn't, he basically didn't have much gas left in the tank for the rest of the fight. And Wilder managed to recover in the eighth Ortiz pretty much couldn't push the action because he was too tired from the assault in the seventh. And as the rounds went by into the ninth and then finally into the tenth, Wilder got his sharpness back. He landed a series of shots which dropped Ortiz in the tenth round. Ortiz got up, but he was sent to the canvas once more with a terrific uppercut from Deontay Wilder. And the referee waved it off as soon as Ortiz went down. So... It was a fantastic fight. It was a dramatic fight. It was a fight in which which uh, Wilder proved he had a better chin than a lot of people gave him credit for. He had heart. He stayed. He kept it together mentally when he was in trouble. It was his first real acid test, you know, and he passed the test. In fact, there are a lot of parallels between this fight and Anthony Joshua's fight with Vladimir Klitschko. It was a very, very similar kind of fight with the veteran kind of nicking the early rounds, but then the young, fresh guy breaking through in the fifth, just as Anthony Joshua broke through in the fifth against Klitschko with a knockdown to turn the tide. And then Klitschko obviously came back in the sixth, whereas Ortiz came back in the seventh against Wilder. So it was a very, very similar kind of fight to Joshua versus Klitschko. And obviously Joshua versus Klitschko ended in, ended in the 11th. Wilder versus Ortiz ended in the 10th. And yeah, very, very similar fights, good fights. And this is only going to serve to really build up a unification between Joshua and Wilder. If Joshua gets past Joseph Parker, because this was an exciting fight. It was, you know, Wilder <laughs> made a lot of mistakes in the fight. He was even more wild than normal. You know, Wilder normally gets wild when he hurts you. In this fight here against Ortiz, he was getting wild even when he hadn't hurt Ortiz. Uh, But Wilder is so frenetic when he attacks you. (laughs) There was one particular exchange where 
Wilder was throwing these wild swinging shots at Ortiz up close. And Ortiz was trying to fire back and counter Wilder, but nothing of Ortiz's was landing. <laughs> and somehow Wilder, with all these wild swings, was ducking and dodging because he, what he was doing was so erratic and it was so just ungainly. Ortiz couldn't, write, couldn't quite get the timing right to counter him because it was just so unorthodox what Wilder was doing in front of him. And I guess that in itself is, I don't want to say a skill, but it's definitely something that makes Wilder difficult is the fact that he's so unorthodox. So yeah, Wilder made a lot of mistakes, but at the end it was his energy, his punching power and his youth that won the day here. You know, he Wilder tried to box, I guess his usual fight where he tries to counter punch and he was just looking for the big right hand, just staying on the back foot, staying on the back foot, waiting for Ortiz to make a mistake and jump in with a big right hand. And as I've said about him many times and, you know, Paulie Malinaji famously, famously said about Donnie Stevenson, Wilder is a one trick pony, but it's one hell of a trick. He always finds a way to land his right hand, always. You know, as long as he's in the fight, as long as he ain't been knocked out, he's going to find a way to crack you with a right hand. And when he does, boy, you better have a hell of a chin because he's going to hurt you. So that was the story of this fight. He managed to grind down the older man. The older man sold out in the seventh round, you know, emptied out the gas tank through everything he had in the hope that he could take Wilder out, but it didn't work. Wilder stayed on his feet, regrouped, came back and won the fight. So exciting. Wilder showed vulnerabilities, of course, but he also showed his strengths. So yeah, let me know what you felt about the fight. <laughs> I was definitely very excited watching it. It was a seesaw battle. And as I say, it's definitely going to build a unification with Joshua. So yeah, drop them below. Let me know how you felt about it. Um, there was a point in, it might have been an attempt where Wilder staggered Ortiz. I think it was before the first knockdown and Wilder cracked Ortiz in the back of the head with a couple of shots which may have disorientated him. So I, I do want to mention that because some people are going to say, hey, what about the back of the head shots? He did land some back of the head shots. If you watch when he, he, he cracked Ortiz with a clean right hand, went flying in and started whacking him on the back of the head. And, um, you know, that has to be said. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, you let me know what you think in the comments. And um, yeah, how do you think Wilder's going to fare against Joshua or Parker? All right, I'm out.